So, Srinivasan Jain, who happens to work at NDTV, posted bail for Muhammad Zubair and he got bail at 6 p.m. at lightning speed. Should we read too much into this? That perhaps NDTV and Muhammad Zubair are linked? But wait, 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 before you answer that question, think of this scenario. There is a right wing channel and somebody working in that right wing channel. In fact, that person is identified very closely with that channel, posted bail for Nupur Sharma and she got out of jail. Just assume theoretical scenario. Do you think the left lumpens would have kept quiet? By now, New York Times would have published three articles. Ilhan Omar would be mulling her next resolution to uh, submit in the House. A lot of mayhem would have happened and people will be banging the fists and, and their heads against the wall saying, look what this country has come to. There are 1.35 billion people in India, give or take a million. And there was nobody else, nobody else in the country that could post a meager amount of 50,000 bail. There you go. That is Mr. Srinivasan Jain posting bail for Muhammad Zubair for an amount of 50,000 rupees. What exactly is the relationship between these two? Has NDTV's data been fact-checked by Mr. Muhammad Zubair? I don't know because I don't watch everything. In fact, I'm a late entrant into the optics and the uh, news coverage of Indian media. I'm only like five, six years old. So I'm, should, I'm not the best judge to say whether this alt news, this fact checking thing that they used to run, whether they ever found anything wrong with NDTV. Because if they did not, that's the telltale sign that there is a link. Again, I'm not saying this, the data is saying this. But the point I'm trying to make here is that anybody who still thinks that all these things are not connected, I mean, you are living in a fool's paradise. You know, the sooner you wake up, the better it is for your own future. Forget about everything else. This also brings us a bigger question. Remember Tista Settlevard and, and uh, all the cases around uh, her used to always find it in front of the same judge in the Supreme Court. And they used to get, you know, signed off on like almost instantly. Is there something like this happening in this case also? Again, I'm not going to be the judge of that. You have to look at the data and you have to make the determination if that is what is happening. So the system is completely within the control of a few. I mean, just take a look at what happened to NDTV frauds. I've spent months and months and months and months writing two different volumes, version one and version two. What you're seeing behind you is version one. In fact, this is only available in ebook form. I stopped printing copies. There are some people who are selling it. If, if you get it, good for you. My point in, in saying all this is that not for a single day has NDTV ever gone off air. In fact, we are going to come up with a long story over the weekend about what exactly has been happening with uh, NDTV and some of the appeals that they have in the SEBI Appellate Tribunal. That will come over the weekend. Then there'll be perhaps more shows uh, talking about all those things. My limited point here is how is it that this government, which has been in power for eight years, unable to take NDTV offline even for one day, even though the court found them guilty of anti-national activities. Today, there is an article in P Gurus where we have told about several YouTube channels, several other things being banned because of uh, anti-national activity. Is NDTV now going to be closed? We don't know. We'll have to wait and see. But don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel. It is that oxygen that keeps us going. And also, please don't forget to click on the bell button for notifications. Thank you and Namaskar.